What you're about to see is a real-life story. Taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. Usually when a person has been swindled and is aware of it, he seeks punitive measures and restoration through the police department. In this particular case, I call it the perfect match. The victim realized he had been defrauded, but for the life of him couldn't see anything unlawful about the transaction. I'll never forget what an utterly bewildered man he was the first time he came to this office. Captain Braddock? Yes. I think I've been swindled. Don't you know? I'm not sure. Uh, suppose you sit down, Mr... Uh... Johnson. William Johnson. What makes you think you've been swindled, Mr. Johnson? Well, actually, it wasn't me who was swindled. It was Mr. Belmont. The jewelry store, Belmont? Yes, that's right. I'm sales manager there. Have been for the past dozen years. And this is the first time that anyone has defrauded. Very well, Mr. Johnson. Suppose you start from the beginning. Now, let me see. It was around closing time. It's my job to place all precious stones in the safe overnight. I was in the process of removing diamonds from the showcase when I heard someone coming in. I'm sorry to bother you. I didn't realize it was this late. Oh, not at all, sir. It's my pleasure to serve you. Would you care to sit down? No, thanks. We'll only be a minute. I just want to pick up some trifle to give for a friend. Oh, perhaps a gold pencil or a cigarette case. Perhaps. You know Reginald's taste better than I do, darling. Uh, what would you suggest? Reggie has a flair for the starfling. Oh, uh, a star ruby, for instance. Yes, that sounds like him. You wouldn't have something uh, just a bit more attractive than the ordinary star ruby, would you? Yes, I have a ring that I think both you and your friend would like very much. Although I'd hardly call it a trifle. We'd like to see it if you don't mind. Not at all. There it is. Oh, that's very nice. Do you want it? Now, we came here to buy Reggie a gift, not me. And what is the price? $1,475. Of course, that includes federal and local taxes. All right, then. We'll take it. Just have to write up the sales slip. Mr. Um, John Haggerty. Mr. Haggerty. Oklahoma City. Do you have a local address? We always stay at the Biltmore Astoria. Yes, sir. And do you have an account with us? I'm afraid not. Well, it's just a matter of local bank references. Oh, don't bother. It's so late. Suppose I just give you the cash. I'll have this gift wrapped for you in just a moment. Fine. Tell me. Once Haggerty made himself known, was it long before he paid you another visit? Not very. As a matter of fact, it was the next day. Saturday, to be exact. In the afternoon, I suppose, when the banks were closed. Yes, sir. But this time, he was alone. Mr. Haggerty, how are you this afternoon? Fine, thank you, Mr. Johnson. And Mrs. Haggerty? Fortunately, she had an appointment at the beauty parlor. Gives me a chance to surprise her. Any uh, special event? I should say so. Our fifth anniversary. May I congratulate you, sir? Thank you. By the way, what is the traditional gift for five years of marriage? Well, let me think. That would be, uh, wood. Our wooden anniversary? <laughs> I'm afraid I spoiled Mrs. Haggerty during these five short years we've been together. No, if it were something in wood, it would have to be a forest or perhaps a hunting line. I've got it. A yacht. May I suggest a piece of jewelry? 
appropriately wrapped in a wooden box. An excellent idea. That solves the problem and it shows thoughtfulness, too. Has Mrs. Haggerty any preference in jewelry? No. Can't say that she has. A diamond is always a good investment. Mrs. Haggerty isn't interested in investments, naturally. Well, perhaps we could create something for her that she'd be pleased with. Say, she did like that star ruby we purchased yesterday. That might be the very thing. Or a star sapphire. Have you any of those? Yes, we have several extremely beautiful ones. If you'll excuse me a moment, I'll get them for you. Mr. Belmont has acquired these rare gems for his special customers. They are fascinating, aren't they? Yeah. All perfect stones. Beautiful reflections, too. Oh, any lady would be proud to own one. I'm sure of it. But I don't think it's, uh, how shall I say it, uh, impressive enough. <laughs> this one belonged to the Hohenzollerns. It's only $4,000, and we have some beautiful platinum mountings. Mm. No, I guess not. Oh, we have others less expensive, ranging from $200 on up. That's my point, Johnson. Rubies, sapphires, they're almost a drug on the market. I want something, well, something really special. I don't like to ask, Mr. Haggerty, but have you any particular amount in mind that you'd care to spend? Oh, it's not a matter of money. It's purely sentiment. Naturally. If you're not in a hurry, I, uh, I have a good hour. Fine. I'll show you some rare gems. But uh, he wouldn't say how much he'd spend. No, he wouldn't, Mr. Belmont. But knowing Mr. Haggerty, I don't think ten or fifteen thousand dollars would stop him. was uh, Lady Worthington's bracelet. <laughs> to Mr. Haggerty, a diamond is just a diamond. Unless, of course, it happens to be the Hope diamond. You remember this? Yes, of course. Twelve different precious stones. One for each month in the year. Well, what else would you suggest? Oh, yes. The black pearl earrings. They're on consignment from the Deauville estate. Our commission is 15%. No, I don't think so. The necklace is too colorful, and the black pearls too depressing. But all these diamonds, Mr. Haggerty, are perfectly matched. I don't doubt it. But compared to the diamond necklace I presented Mrs. Haggerty when we were married. Perhaps Mr. Belmont, he's the owner of the store, might be able to suggest something more to your liking. Mr. Belmont, may I present Mr. Haggerty? Mr. Haggerty is here on a visit from Oklahoma City. And he wants a gift, a very special gift, for his fifth wedding anniversary. How do you do, Mr. Haggerty? Mr. Belmont. We keep our collector's items in the vault. If you'd care to join us? Mm, a pleasure. Would there be something in the way of a bracelet, a ring, or perhaps a necklace that Mrs. Haggerty would prefer? No. I hate to say it, but what makes shopping for us so difficult is because she has everything. I understand. But a collector's item. That's what I'd like. Something exclusive. A gem, for instance. The only one of its kind in the world. They come pretty high, Mr. Haggerty. Oh, hang the expense. I have just the thing. This uh, emerald, Mr. Haggerty, belonged to Marie Antoinette. Has a warranty with it, too. It's a perfect gem. The only one there is like it. And the price is $40,000. $40,000? It will always be worth that, Mr. Haggerty. Later on, maybe more. I think Mrs. Haggerty will be pleasantly surprised. You mean you'll uh, take it? If it's all Mr. Belmont says it is, and there's a warranty to prove it. I don't see why not. 
You want it mounted, I suppose? No, I'll leave that up to Mrs. Haggerty. I'll write you a check. On a Oklahoma City Bank, Mr. Haggerty? Not at all. Wherever I go, I always open a sizable account. More convenient, you know. A local bank? Yes, Security Trust. That happens to be our bank, too. Why don't you call them for my references? They're closed. Oh, of course, Saturday afternoon. How stupid of me. I'll tell you what I'll do. Suppose I give you my check for the full amount. Then, after you deposit it Monday morning, you can deliver the emerald to me at the hotel. Why don't you give us your check on Monday, Mr. Haggerty? Nonsense. You're a reputable firm. Fine reputation and all that. Surely you're not going to run away with my $40,000. <laughs> Monday morning when the bank opened, Mr. Belmont was there with the check. An hour later, Johnson was at Haggerty's Hotel with the Emerald. Oh, good morning. Morning, Mr. Haggerty. I trust I'm not too early. Not at all. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Have you had your breakfast? Yes, thanks. I brought the Emerald. Oh. I take it you deposited my check. Sit down. Well, we can't be too careful. For our customers' protection, you understand. <laughs> After all, I am a stranger here. Not anymore, Mr. Haggerty. We opened an account for you, so anything you wish to charge will be quite all right. Uh, this warranty, it's in French. Yes, sir. That's Marie Antoinette's seal. Oh, good. Come in, dear. I'm sorry. I thought it was the waiter with breakfast. You remember Mr. Johnson from Belmont and Company? Yes, of course. How are you, Mr. Johnson? Quite well, thanks. And you? Oh, tired. It's been one round of dinners and parties. <laughs> Say, you two aren't up to something. Now, what would we be up to? You can't fool me, John Haggerty. Uh, 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 uh. So that's it. <laughs> now, dear, I told you I didn't want anything for our anniversary. You know, I just can't let him out of my sight. All he ever does is come back with a surprise for me. Why, before long, if he keeps this up, I'll be able to open my own jewelry store. <laughs> <laughs> well, there aren't many men like Mr. Haggerty. And I can't say I blame him. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you. Now, dear, what is it this time? Patience, my girl. Tomorrow's our anniversary, not today. <laughs> <laughs> well, if ever there's anything else. Uh, I'm glad you said that, Mr. Johnson. There is something. This star ruby we purchased last week. Is there anything wrong? Oh. It's just that Reggie already had one exactly like it. Yes, I thought you wouldn't mind taking it back. Of course, if it's any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. We'll have your account credited with it. If it's all the same, you might send a refund to the hotel here by messenger. By all means. It was a pleasure to do business with you. You haven't seen the last of me, Mr. Johnson. I hope not. I trust we'll meet again, Mrs. Haggerty. I'm afraid so. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. Goodbye. When next you're in town, drop into the store. If it's just to say hello, it's a prompt. <laughs> yes, Mr. Haggerty really meant to keep his promise. In a moment, we'll follow up the case of the perfect match. And now let's follow up the case of the perfect match. It was around Christmas when the Haggertys dropped in to see Mr. Johnson. Well, Mrs. Haggerty, Mr. Haggerty, so nice to see you again. It's good to be back, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Won't you sit down? How was the weather in Oklahoma City? We haven't been home in ages. As a matter of fact, we just docked this morning. Europe? We like to get away from it all each year on the Italian Riviera. Well, your voyage has certainly done you both good. Thank you. How long will you be in town this time? Only a week. That's why we came directly in here with this. You don't care for it? Care for it? Why, I think she parted with me before she let go of that emerald. Oh, I see. Then I take it you want to have it mounted. Is that right, Miss? Uh, that's Patrick? right. I want it made into a pair of earrings. With one emerald? Two, Mr. Johnson. There's an exact duplicate of this one. Uh, a copy? No, indeed. There's a pair of genuine emeralds in existence, with a mate to match Mrs. Haggerty's. But the warranty clearly states yes. that it's just a moment. When we were abroad, we decided to find out if there were any other Marie Antoinette gems available. And in our search, we came across this booklet. 
The confidential information reveals that Marie Antoinette never satisfied with one, always had two originals in her collection. If there's another such emerald, and there is, we want it, Mr. Johnson. This comes as a complete surprise. You can imagine our surprise, especially since we paid a premium for what we consider to be the only one of its kind. I think this is a matter for Mr. Belmont. And that being the case, Mr. Belmont, there are two reasons why I must have that other emerald. The first and most important one is because Mrs. Haggerty has her heart set on a pair of earrings with those exquisite gems. And then there's the financial aspect. If we own both of them, we can maintain their value on the market. That's true, Mr. Haggerty, but searching all over the world for a Marie Antoinette emerald is like uh, looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> Actually, it isn't that difficult. If you'll notice the inside back cover of that book that we brought back from the continent, there's a list of the world's great gem setters. All you have to do is contact the various jewelers in those cities, and perhaps one of them will have a lead. Of course, if you don't want to be bothered, I can send the cables myself. Oh. I can engage another firm to do it for me. Oh, no, Mr. Haggerty. If the other emerald can be located, Belmont and Company will find it for you. Naturally, we send cables and telegrams to all the largest jewelers in the world. Now, tell me, let me guess. You received a reply from Mexico City. Oh, that's right. But how did you know? Well, when an architect builds a good house, he repeats those plans because they're proven. The same thing is true with the confidence man, Mr. Johnson. When his plans work out, he sticks with them, too. It's what we call a pattern for crime. Then this wasn't something new. No, I'm afraid not. Haggerty knew that you'd wire Mexico City. And he also knew that you'd phone him the minute you received an answer. Yes, that's what happened, all right. What shall I tell him? Tell him we found the emerald, naturally. But actually, we don't have it yet. May I speak to Mr. John Haggerty, please? Mr. Haggerty? Let me handle it. Hello? Mr. Haggerty? Really, Mr. Belmont? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Haggerty will be thrilled when I tell her. Fine. Fine. We'll see you later this afternoon. What do you know? Our friend Mr. Belmont just received a cable from Mexico City. Here, here! This calls for a celebration. Another glass of champagne, Raymond. Gracias. How do you say it, Senor Haggerty? The cat, she is in the bag, huh? Yes, the cat, he is in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Raymond. Hmm? Who shall we drink to this time? To... Uh, to Senor Jose Delgado, our Mexico City Confederate who wastes no time. To Jose Delgado. Uh -huh. Yes, I'll drink to that. Raymond will have to be leaving shortly. We will all have uh, dinner together? I don't think we should. We can't take any chances on being seen together. Uh, not at this stage of the game. Oh, that's right. You know he has a point that, after all, Senor Belmont and I will be on the same plane together. She'll stop by before you leave. Of course. Yes, you mustn't forget the most important thing. The emerald. The emerald. <laughs> Good. Uh, see you at six. At six, then. You're supposed to be a lady. <laughs> Sometimes I get bored playing character parts. Yes, this is good news. I'm afraid there's some bad news, too. 
Mr. Belmont telephoned Senor Delgado in Mexico City and was told that the owner of the other Marie Antoinette emerald wants eighty thousand dollars for his gem. Eighty thousand dollars? Why, that's ridiculous. It's twice what I paid for mine. By the same token, Mr. Haggerty, if the Mexican collector values his emerald that high, then yours would be worth it, too. Yes. I never thought of it that way. The trouble is, Mr. Belmont, I'm strictly an amateur. How can I be sure the other emerald isn't a mere copy? Don't worry about that, Mr. Haggerty. When it comes to rare gems, I know my business. By the way, uh, you don't happen to have your emerald with you. Yes, I have. When you telephoned me, I thought you'd acquire the other one, and I wanted to compare them. There isn't a flaw in this emerald anywhere, Mr. Haggerty. And if they're two of a kind, then the other must necessarily be perfect. I should hope so. I know every line, every dimension in this gem. One thing I can assure you, I'll know the duplicate when I see it. Let me see now. If I did pay 80000 for the duplicate and 40000 for mine, that would mean $120,000 for the pair. If I may say so, Mr. Haggerty, acquisition of both the emeralds would give you a much more solid price level. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right, Mr. Belmont. I'll purchase that emerald. How soon will you leave for Mexico City? On tonight's plane. Mr. Belmont wasted no time and was quite relieved to be on his way back from Mexico with the emerald. He could hardly wait to phone the Haggertys and tell them the good news. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Haggerty, Mr. John Haggerty. What's that? You're quite sure? What is it? He checked out last night. Hello? This is Mr. Belmont of Belmont and Company Jewelers. I want to speak with Mr. or Mrs. John Haggerty. They did, eh? Well, can you give me their forwarding address? Yes, I'll wait. There is none? I see. Thank you very much. Johnson, do you know what I did? I just paid $80,000 for that same emerald that I sold for exactly one half that price. Yes, Mr. Belmont has been duped into buying back the identical gem he had sold. Only he paid double the emerald's value. It was your fault, Johnson. Why mine? He was your customer. If you can't recognize a crook when you see one, but what about the wife? Ah, they were two of a kind. Two of a kind like the emeralds. I told you there were no duplicates, but no, you had to believe you're Mr. Haggerty. But if there was only one... They sent the same one to Mexico City, probably on the same plane with me. I still can't believe it. No? Well, you can believe this, Johnson. I'm going to hold you personally responsible for the $40,000. Either you find Mr. Haggerty, or I'll find another sales manager. And I'll see to it that you never hold down another job. And even if I did find Mr. Haggerty, it wouldn't do any good. I take it you're still under the impression that Mr. Haggerty did nothing unlawful. He didn't. That's all there is to it. The gem wasn't a copy or a fake. It was the real thing. There was no fraud. Not as far as I can see, anyway. Oh, I'll admit that the scheme was perpetrated with undue finesse, and that on the surface there appeared to be nothing fraudulent about Haggerty's conniving Mr. Belmont into buying back the same emerald. But however, if we pick up the Haggerty's for intent to defraud, can we count upon you and Mr. Belmont to testify against them? You certainly can. Good. That's half the battle. Because the prosecuting attorney was able to prove that the course of action of the four defendants showed an attempt to defraud Belmont and Company, the Haggertys, Ramon Cortez, and Jose Delgado, their Mexican confederate, received 10-year prison sentences. The Haggerty pattern for crime was nothing more than a premeditated plan for swindle. The trouble with so many of these rackets is that the confidence man may be the person you least suspect. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other, and it could happen to you.